Well, hey, first of all, thank you so much for all your prayers and all your love. Tracy discharged. She's home. She feels good. She's breathing good. Yeah. The way my life works kind of runs and I get disasters in threes. One, two, and three. That was my third one. Oh, now I'm done. It's all good. Payback time. I told the devil on this third one, I said, hey, it's going to turn out bad for you. Leave her alone. He didn't listen. Some people are hard-headed. And she's fine now. Yeah. So we're, your prayers were answered. <clears throat> she kind of looks like me now. She's got scars and stuff all over her body. They got a lung scar on this side, clear in the back. They, she had a collapsed lung. Uh, three Thursdays ago, she died on me at the hospital, and I was just walking in the parking lot Thursday morning when it happened. Got in the hospital, and I heard the uh, speakers. Uh, they call I think they call them rescue teams or something. Well, rapid response. Right? Rapid response. Rapid response. That's what it was. Rapid response. Go to room. I'm going. That's odd. That's Tracy's on that floor. That's what. So I didn't even think anything of it. So I went up there, and there was six people in the room, and you know they revived her. Then she had to go down to ICU and get a uh, uh, thing down her throat to breathe. Uh, ventilator? Is that it? Ventilator. Ventil ventil yeah. And she was on a ventilator, and that thing, some machine was breathing for her. And then, uh, then they had to, her right lung collapse, and then they had to have surgery on that. And got, it, was a, it was nasty. Every, every single day it was nasty. But the good thing about it is this, when you reach a point in your life where you're helpless, then you're in line for a miracle. If you can still do something, that's, that's a bad spot. She was helpless. I was helpless. <laughs> that's when God moves. That's when he comes through. The Holy Ghost wants to know, hey, you done? Now I'll take over. Quite a lesson to learn. Tracy been with me from day one. Um, she led, brought me to the Lord years ago. Uh, she was with me when I started the radio program, 2002. Uh, when I started the house of healing in 06, she was there praying and giving me ideas and talking about it. She's been my partner from day one. And, you know, I thought, well, she's going to be restored. She's going to be part of the revival. And here she is dying on me. I thought, well, this can't, this can't be happening. You know, I, I didn't hear it wrong. And I was right. She's back. I'm back. Yeah. yeah. So, bad things happen to good people all the time, and bad things happen to bad people all the time. And that's what it is. It's a trial. You got to work your way through it. You got to learn from it, and you got to keep pressing forward. If you let your trials crush you, then you're in a hopeless spot, and you can't get anywhere. You never, you'll never succeed. Right? That's the God's honest truth. That's what the Bible teaches. Tonight's Bible study is, oops, uh, based on this horrible experience I just went through with Tracy. Let's go after it. Thank you for your prayers again. They were all answered. She doing great. She listening right now, watching the, the teaching it tonight. Thank you, sweetheart. All right, our next uh, seminar, of course, is at the end of July. And uh, I changed my radio schedules. Uh, it's a little different now. Um, on uh, locally here, Monday through Friday, one on Saturday and two on Sundays. Uh, all the radio programs are always on the internet here, Omni FM. You can pick them up off the website. Uh, I hit a record uh, 68,000 listeners last week. Yeah, started out with 14. So it's gone from 12 or 14 to 68,000. So that's, we're kind of creeping up there. Sometimes you just got to creep along. 
It doesn't mean you're a creep. It means that <laughs> didn't appreciate that laughter. Would you like to help the minister here? When you buy stuff on Amazon, my wife does it all the time. She's a professional. She go, she's still here? Oh, she went home. Okay, good. Uh, just put in, smile as she's on Amazon as I speak. Uh, go to Smile Amazon and put in our charity name and they'll pay us when you buy something. It won't cost you a nickel. And we will be able to pay the rent and the utility. Well, we don't have any rent. We own the building, but, you know, we got all these expenses. All right, we added a uh, YouTube teaching channel. The radio channel is now on there. You know about the miracle list? Send me an email and I'd be happy to send that to you. Thank you for your donations off the website. YouTubers, we love you. Thank you for your prayers for Tracy. They were all answered. I wrote three books and the fourth one is Spanish Plan of Spirits. That's a, a booklet on how to be cured. Christians can be cured from mental illnesses. The other one's on healing. The other one's on the devil. Thursday night healing rooms, I guess, is booming around here. Booming. Every week I get all kinds of crazy reports. It's really something. I guess Rick's just killing the thing. Thursday night's here in the main sanctuary, and then the mental illness healing class is in the small sanctuary there. Thursday night's at 7 o'clock as well. Things are going great. I'll be on uh, Talk America Radio. <laughs> the guy that was supposed to host me became seriously ill, ended up in the hospital, and is currently learning to walk again. So I had the interview postponed twice. He thinks he'll be back by July 25th. And uh, I've been praying for him. I said, I know how you feel. <laughs> All right, uh, why is that on there twice? Oh, donation boxes, they're on the doors right there in the red box. Thank you for your donations. Uh, they will not open until there's a donation put in the box. Arnie set up an electrical system that keeps all the doors buzzed shut until there's a donation put in. I got that from my Kenneth Copeland manual. Tonight's Bible study is based on the Holy Bible, the King James Bible. I, I like the King James Bible. It's got a bunch of these and thous in it. But these are the ones I recommend you read because they're based on the Textus Recepticus. And uh, you won't have verses missing out of your Bible if you use one of these. Okay? The best one I've ever seen is this KJ3 Bible. I sell it in the bookstore. That's the best translation I've ever run into. All right. I've been doing a series of teachings on Satan's secrets. He likes to keep everything secret. He's a supernatural genius, and he never plays cards with his, the cards up. He always plays them down. And he's, to say the least, supernaturally intelligent. But if you're familiar with the Word of God, you can track him down. You can expose him. I'm going to do that tonight. Your comfort zone can be the worst thing that ever happened to you. Here's Webster's Dictionary, and here's a definition of what a comfort zone is. It's the temperature range within which one is comfortable. Or, definition two, is the level at which one functions with ease and familiarity. You say, well, those are good things. They are good things temporarily. And then they become bad things. Jesus taught against the, temp, uh, the uh, comfort zones. He gets his 70 disciples together. And these were in addition to the 12 the apostles. And as you recall, in Luke, he gives them a bunch of instructions. They were evangelistic instructions. How to evangelize. Okay? Today we call it Bible college. Back then, they just learned through the Holy Ghost. Now we have Bible colleges that teach it, and it's just absolutely awful. Well, Jesus showed them how to do it, and he said, when you go to this house and that house, here's what you do, here's what you say, and he went through this whole routine, and the 70 went out. And guess what happened? 
they returned with great joy. And they said, Lord, even the demons are subject to us through your name. And Jesus said, uh oh, these guys are headed for the comfort zone. See, your comfort zone can be a very dangerous place, particularly in ministry. If you have a period where things are going well for a long period of time, that's when you can fall into his trap. He catches you. He uses several different techniques, psychiatric techniques to catch you when things are going well. He knows that if a Christian will, by faith, apply the benefits of the gospel, there's nothing he can do to stop it. So he has a backup plan that he uses on people who have already received the benefits of God, and they've been receiving them over a protracted period of time. He's got a special plan for those Christians. Who are those Christians? Those are the successful ones. Not the carnal Christians, not the goofs running around the megachurches, no. These are the accomplished Christians. He leads them quietly, gently, and to, for him, lovingly, into the comfort zone where the person feels okay. Very dangerous spot. God sometimes allows disasters to come into your life if you've been in a comfort zone for a long period of time. He does it because he loves you and wants you to keep growing. Jesus steps in and tries to prevent these disciples from falling into the comfort zone. What's a comfort zone? It can be a period of time where everything's going right, where you're successful. You've got the anointing. You've got God's blessing. Things are going your way. It gets dangerous right about that time. So Jesus tries to circumvent it, knowing the devil specializes in comfort zones. He likes them. He says to the disciple, or the, the, the 70, he says, now listen, you've been casting out demons, and that's great, and everybody's happy about that. That's the devil's taking a beating. All that's good. Notice he doesn't say anything negative about that. He says, but you've got to watch yourself. Let me give you an example. I can top that. I actually saw Satan fall from heaven like lightning. I'm not talking about casting demons out of Judea. Okay, that's good. He's not criticizing it. Okay, nothing wrong with that. We do that here all the time. He said, but I actually saw the devil himself thrown out of heaven. I saw it with my own eyes. Like if he went out like lightning. He said, listen, I'm giving you exousia authority to stomp on serpents and scorpions. Those are descriptions of demons. He didn't mean actual snakes and lizards and scorpions. He wasn't talking about this. Wasn't, this wasn't a nature training session. <laughs> and all, over all the dunamis, supernatural power of the enemy. See, uh, scorpions and, and lizards and snakes, they don't have supernatural power. They have natural power given to them by God. They don't have supernatural power. He's talking about spirits here. And God has given you authority over the supernatural power of spirits. What he's saying here. And they all looked at him and said, I, I know that. We just did it. They had just done it. Nothing will hurt you. They said, well, we know that too because we're all, we came back, we won. This is great. But, he says, watch it. Watch it. There's a comfort zone there. Be careful. He says, don't go around rejoicing because you cast demons out of somebody or somebody got healed or you're doing some ministry work. Ministry works good. He's not criticizing it. But keep it in perspective to what's really important. And that's your eternal soul. Rejoice because your names are written in heaven. If you get too comfortable in your ministry, in your relationships, at work, at whatever, that's when the devil moves in. He moves in using different techniques. I'll go over a couple of them with you. If you get too comfortable, pride sneaks in. 
if you get too comfortable, you start to think you're doing a good job. Hey, wait a minute. I'm that was a great sermon the other night. I killed that one. You killed it there, but you're also about to get killed later, and you're not gonna like it because you're getting too comfortable with the things of God, and you're losing what you really should appreciate. If you cast a demon on somebody, that's a good thing. He's not criticizing it. But your name written in glory is far more important than you casting a demon out of her. Even though that's good. I'm not criticizing it. Neither was the Lord. You pray for somebody and they're healed. Good. That's great. That's not the most important thing. So if you get comfortable with your ministry or your marriage, your job, or your relationships, you get too comfortable there. The devil starts to move in. And you won't see him coming. It's easy to miss him while you're stretching in bed there. Oh, I think I'll sleep another hour. That's when you get in trouble. Hello? Let's check out Peter. Peter had gotten into a comfort zone, a real bad one. He had been traveling with Jesus, and it was a party. Peter was a partier. He was an extrovert. He had a big mouth. <laughs> Don't raise your hands if you have a spouse like that, but <laughs> Peter had gotten into a comfort zone of seeing victory constantly. Jesus would disappear and escape from Pharisees. He'd see 150 people healed in one prayer meeting. One deliverance after the other. Hundreds of them. People getting saved and healed like waterfall. Yeah. Unbelievable healings and miracles occurred in Christ's ministry. Incredible miracles. And Peter was standing right there. He had a front row seat. And the devil started going, well, Peter, man, this isn't all Jesus. Come on, man, you're out here working too. I mean, you're killing yourself. Out. Look at the crowd control. Look what you're doing. Look, at you're organizing the crowd. You're, you're preaching to them. You're telling them this. You're telling them that. Look at what you're seeing. You're part of this, man. Oh, you don't understand. The devil's got a litany of compliments for you you wouldn't even believe. I mean, he, he, he will come at you like he likes you. <laughs> to him, you are a monstrous suck. But he will put up a front uh -huh. like you're his friend. You're a great preacher. Oh, you're a good man of God. Wow, you got this addiction thing nailed. You're killing this relationship thing. Well, you're, you're just a great wife. Pretty soon a refrigerator drops on you. Boom. You got too comfortable. You start feeling the comfort zone. Peter was feeling it. He says, Lord, I'll never be offended when they come to arrest you. I'll never do that. No, I'm not. Why was he saying that? Well, he had just had nothing but total victory. He was getting used to this thing. See? The devil had set him up. He said, hey, you've been with the Messiah here for Two, three, four years now, right? Man, you're killing this thing. You're part of this massive anointing. You were there during the transfiguration, weren't you? You came up with that bright idea of building a tent for Elisha. That was genius. Nobody liked it, but I liked it. <laughs> Peter, you're a man, buddy. A little tense. Nobody would have thought of that except me because I put that thought in your head, but he didn't tell him that. Build 310. You're the man, Peter. Well, Peter goes, hey, I'm, I'm the man. What? Well, betray you? What are you, nuts? I'm not going to. No, there's no way. I'm not going to do it. What happened to poor Peter? Man, he had got into that. He got used to being successful. He got used to winning. It happens in every venue of life. 
every venue of life very prominent in sports yeah years ago some guy named Buster Douglas got a title shot this guy was a mediocre fighter and a fat slob <laughs> he had no championship pedigree of any kind it's a third grade loser box of rocks dumb was addicted to food Imagine being a professional fighter with a food addiction. Dude, you got problems. You've got bad problems. Well, a miracle happens. The guy gets a shot at the title. Somebody drops out of the fight. They need to fill in. Hey, I'll call Buster Douglas. This guy's a moron. He's an easy payday. We'll blow him right out of the gate. And Buster Douglas takes it. Well, Mike Tyson, the undefeated heavyweight champion, had pulled a Peter. So he had gotten into a comfort zone. Everybody I nail with that left hook, on, they face the gates of hell. I'm used to winning. Right. Everything's going my way. I got $150 million in my checking account. Mm -hmm. Soon to be relieved by a guy standing behind him named Don King. Soon he was broke. But anyway, at that time, he had $150 million. And see, when you, the devil gets you when things are going too good. They go too good and you get caught Buster Douglas didn't show up to the fight like he normally did like it was a pie-eating contest he showed up in shape he lost 50 pounds he killed himself in the gym he didn't show up as stiff they had routed a memo that he was going to be knocked out in the second round Buster didn't get the memo Is anybody listening to me at all? 42 to 1 underdog, biggest upset in the history of sports. Why? The devil gave him Peter. Peter's winning. Winning. Peter thought he was Charlie Sheen. Winning. <laughs> he says, You will all leave me tonight, and you'll leave me alone. But I am not alone, Jesus said. I'm never alone. Oh. Lord, you got to be kidding. The devil right behind him. Hey, you're Peter the man. Straighten him out. I'm not leaving. I'm not going to get offended. No. Not going to happen. In fact, in fact, the devil told him, go ahead. Bet some more chips. You go all in. I'll die with you. I'm going to die with you, Lord. Oh wow, if you're not listening to me right now, you're headed for some very bad times. Peter had it, man. Why? Don't you see it? He had too many things going his way. He had seen too many healings, too many deliverances. He saw too many miracles. Oops. Oops. You know the story. Yeah, it was three and three. He denied him three times. He came back to see him and he'd fallen asleep three times. Hello? After Jesus is gone, what does Peter do? He returns to his old comfort zone, which is what every backslider does. Every drug addict does it. They return back to what they were comfortable with sometimes it's very bad sometimes it's abuse children would rather be beaten than ignored wives would better be beaten than ignored some wives go back for another beating hello am I helping anybody he returned to his old comfort zone what he felt comfortable with which wasn't his ministry it was fishing he was a professional top-notch Fisherman, top-notch. But he had got caught. He had had too many victories, and he wasn't sober and vigilant anymore. He just got comfortable winning. The devil's got a special program for people to get too comfortable winning. 
Oof. John chapter 21 Simon Peter said I'm gonna go fishing. I said well, we're gonna go with you They had all ran off and failed and They caught nothing that night the morning came and Jesus stood on the shore and they didn't know it was him listen if you go back to your old life to the parts that you were comfortable with You'll never hear the Lord calling you again He'll call you and you won't hear anymore He's yelling at him from the show and they don't know it's him why they had gone back to their old comfort zone Had Peter not got caught He would have never gone three and three He would have stopped and said Lord hmm I know you're always right we think about that for a second. Okay. Yeah, I hear you. I do need to be sober and vigilant tonight. Yeah, they're going to come for you. Okay, I'm listening. No. Listen carefully. People that are in their comfort zone don't listen. They don't listen. Even when they're warned by a prophet in a mega church, a prophet comes in. Hey, they don't. <laughs> Peter wasn't listening. <clears throat> oh, the Jerusalem revival. Oh, man, this thing was utterly off the chain. Incredible. Healings and deliverances and everything. Salvation. Just <clears throat> the devil was getting mowed under. The devil has a plan. Even when he's getting mowed under You know what it is I saw it on TV yesterday This uh, athlete who's an MMA fighter and he's literally unbeatable his name is uh, Jones, what's his first name? John. John Jones this guy can't be beaten well, he's uh, talking to a reporter and he shows him his elbow move, which is the best in the business. He's got some weird elbow thing where he clunks somebody and they're out on their feet. And he says, well, here's how it works. I put my hands up and I get my opponent, opponent to push at me. He pushes at me. And then I drop back and go this way. And the person's pushing doesn't know it's going to happen and he falls forward clunk out the door the Jerusalem Bible's got the devil oh man he's taking a king sized whipping he knows he can't stop it he knows he's beat so he reverses field he lets it go Yes. Yes. Oh, Jesus. He lets it go. This must be heretic teaching. Is it really? Think about it for a second. The Holy Ghost saw him do it. The Holy Spirit saw the devil. This thing was going everywhere. But it was going to stay there. And God couldn't allow it to stay there because He had you on His mind. And you. And you. Amen. What do you have to do there? Oh, you talk about a comfort zone? The uh, Holy Ghost revival? That was the epitome of a comfort zone. Couldn't get any better. What happened? Let's see. Persecution started. And they were scattered everywhere. And that appeared to be a defeat. It appeared to be a loss. But the Holy Ghost had outsmarted the devil again. 
And to prove that wasn't a defeat, you're sitting here listening to me tonight. Amen. Yes. The devil would have let that revival go. He would have built that thing up to the Tower of Babel as long as it stayed there. The Spirit of God saw him do it and said, hey, I'm going to have to scatter these saints out. How am I going to do that? I'm going to pull them out of their comfort zone. And they'll move. Carnal Christians have to be pushed out of their comfort zone many times because they can't do it themselves. People who are addicted to sugar like sugar. Yeah, yeah that was. I've had chemistry training. And human beings, by nature, if they like something, they're very, very apt to repeat it. By nature. And they won't stop repeating it until they're encouraged to repeat it. What kind of encouragement would that be? Well, a gentle word. No, no. Yelling at them, stop it! No, 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 no. No, no that works with a small percent, but other people who are as stubborn as the gates of hell have to be moved out of their comfort zone. And when it happens, they don't know it's God. So they don't receive it, or they complain about it, or they get upset. What's the Spirit of God doing? Shutting down the revolt? What are you doing? Are you screwing up? This thing's going great. Don't you get it? Lord Jesus, have a seat. Let me explain this to you. I'll use Amazon for you now, so maybe you can understand that. Once you get the thing going, you just get it going. <laughs> now, it's good for Amazon taking over the world. That ain't good for the gospel. Okay. The gospel takes over the eternal world, not just the Amazon world. All right. All right. They had to be moved out of Jerusalem because the devil was sucking him into a tower of Babel. Scenario. Okay. He'd done it before. All right. Bad things happening to you? Well, let's sit down and look at that for a second. Maybe the good Lord's trying to encourage you to move your chest piece. Yeah. But wait a minute, how can that be? I'm blessed. <laughs> <laughs> things are going great. Wait a minute. That's not the big picture. See, things are going great now, but God wants you great over here as well. Am I helping anybody? Yes, sir. Your comfort zone is great temporarily, but it becomes Ebola long term. And people by nature don't want to be moved out of their comfort zone. Some people love to couch potato it. You ever met a couch potato? Yes. <laughs> they get through with their stuff during the day and they wade through the family at night. And when they reach that point, this thing here heads for that. And it's like somebody dropping a bowling ball out of the ceiling. They're not moving. They won't move. You had to get a crane to get somebody <laughs> off a couch. Well, the Holy Ghost has got to get that Christian off that couch. And if they're not going to voluntarily move out of love, he's got to send you something. 
And how does he do it? Well, he tricks the devil. He sees the devil bringing you a bunch of hell and high water. So he just manipulates the devil and he don't know he's getting manipulated. The devil thinks he's beating you when he's actually contributing to his own loss. Yes. What happened there when they got out of their comfort zone? Well, Philip was a busboy during the revival, and he got the Holy Ghost and the anointing. So had, they, had he kept bussing tables at the revival, some of us may not even been here. I don't know who he eventually helped, but it had to have been spectacular. But nobody would have got anything from Philip, see? You, the worst thing in the world is for a born-again Christian to waste their anointing. Yes. Yes. Philip was busting tables. That was a training period. He was called to be a supernatural evangelist, not just a bus boy. But he had to bus first. These rock God TV preachers, I just take this course and then you go out and you become Reinhard Bonnke. No, that's not how it works. You gotta bust tables first. Right. You gotta clean right. some toilets first. Right. You gotta sweep the floor first, so to speak, spiritually speaking. Hello? Yeah. Philip was forced out of Jerusalem. See? Now remember, on a couch potato, the Christian looks at the seat. Fanny is this wide now. It was this wide last year. And as they're moving into the seat like a 747, they're maneuvering the swing. And the fanny swings this way. And then it goes down for the landing. Boom! God will never pull that chair out from the person. And let them fall and hurt themselves. The Spirit of God never hurts anybody. Right. He will not yank that chair out. You lazy slob. He never upbraids anybody. He won't do that. No. But he'll encourage the saint to get out of that couch. And he may allow something to happen out here that would motivate the person to get up. And it may be an unpleasant thing. But it's God helping the couch Amen. potato. Oh, this is nasty preaching. This stinks, but let's keep going. <clears throat> the people who want to court saw all the miracles. Look at all these people benefiting from being moved out of his comfort zone. Hundreds healed, hundreds delivered. Churches have to be moved out of their comfort zone. Look, check this out. Mark chapter 1. Jesus walks into the synagogue on a Saturday. And uh, he starts teaching them. And people are absolutely amazed at what he's teaching for obvious reasons. He had authority as he taught. And he was spectacular. And suddenly, right in the middle of the service, the devil goes, well, I'm not going to let him continue to teach these incredible truths because I'm going to get slaughtered. I got a plant in that church. <clears throat> Nobody got that one. That should have gone. <laughs> the devil loves churches. He brings in plants. They're all over the place. And he uses them at each particular time. He needs them. You're not listening. These people are plants in the church. Jesus ran into a plant. Oh, all of a sudden, some guy starts screaming right in the middle of his teaching. Okay? Now, that's a good technique for the devil to use. If somebody's screaming during your teaching, that will disrupt it. But, because Jesus didn't believe what the churches now believe, that deliverance ended with the apostles, he does what? The guy's screaming in the church. Then the demons start screaming, hey, let us alone. Get out of here. We know who you are. Remember the story? Jesus then, Fomao, told him to shut up. Boy, there isn't a Christian alive that wouldn't love to have that authority to use on friends, neighbors, and spouses. 
But it's not for that. This is for the spirits, not for the spouse. No, we don't yell at the spouse and shut up. Stop it. Time out. It's a different teaching. Come out of that guy. Don't you see that? These people are plants. They're sitting in the service every Sunday morning. And they, they're used when Satan needs to use them to cause a disruption yes, sir. Yes, sir. in God's word and in the church. They're plants. Well, when this happened, uh, the, peop, the, the unclean spirit did a uh, sparasso. That's a seizure. The guy falls down in the middle of the church, right in the middle of the sermon, has a seizure in front of everybody, and he's crazo screaming, causing a disruption. They were all amazed and they questioned among themselves. What thing is this? What new doctrine is this with authority commands the spirits and they obey him? And his fame went everywhere. Oh That old synagogue Ran the same way every Saturday <laughs> Saturday after Saturday Eric Saturday after Saturday Love you, buddy. That synagogue run the same way every Saturday. The devil had his plants there, but they stay quiet until they're needed. These psycho church people, they just putter until they're resurrected to cause a disruption, cause envy, jealousy, criticism. Well, they got a whole range of stuff they pop up with. They're puffers. <laughs> but that Saturday afternoon God moved that church out of their comfort zone see you get comfortable at church what time does it start mm, what are we doing first 10 minutes boom I can miss that what are we doing the next 10 minutes okay I can show up for that then we got an offering then we got the I know I know I know I know Pretty soon, your church sucks. <laughs> Why? It's in a comfort zone. It putters. Oh, but they didn't plan on having the Son of God there Sunday, Saturday afternoon. Oh, that was a that was a horse of a different color, as Grandpa used to say. And the the plant then manifested. He was called on to serve his real God, the God of this world. He wasn't a servant of Jehovah. He was a plant. He thought he was. Everybody saw it. And guess what happened? His fame went everywhere. There goes the revival. Boom. Had the devil had half a brain, he just left that plant quiet. Then it would have been another sleepy synagogue Saturday. <laughs> sleepy Saturday at the synagogue. <laughs> oh man, with my hat, robe, towel. Goodbye, shalom. Another sleepy Saturday at the synagogue. What? Them demons in that synagogue didn't expect to see the Son of God walk through the darn door. <laughs> Are you listening to anything I'm saying? Amen. That plant tried to stop what's unstoppable. Right. And then it spread everywhere. Yeah. Why? Because of Jesus' teaching? No! Because the plant screwed up. <laughs> the people in that synagogue saw the power of the Holy Ghost squash the power of the devil right, right in front of their eyes. Amen. Amen. Spread everywhere. Why? That synagogue was never the same after that. They had been moved out of there. Amen. This exact scenario happened to Derek Prince. Exactly the same. He was pastoring a sleepy little church, Great Britain. Oh, yeah, it's great over there. Sunday morning, time for a sermon. Oh, yeah. Saturday night prayer meeting. 
Wednesday Bible study. The saints would come strolling in, fall asleep, stagger out. Well, one Sunday morning, guess what happened? A woman sitting on the front row in front of him up there started Mark chapter 1. I got the book in there. So they shall expel demons. It's in the bookstore. Oh, that church was never the same again. Amen. He was never the same again. Amen. That started his worldwide ministry. That woman whom nobody cared about. She started manifesting. She fell down in the service. What was God doing there? Hey, this church either moves out of their comfort zone or the preacher does. Which is it going to be? What, which is one? Which one? <laughs> but somebody's going to get off that sofa and haul this thing to something productive. And it wasn't the church. That church rejected it. It was him. That guy went all over the world on the radio. All over. Am I helping anybody? John the Apostle had to be moved out of his comfort zone. Oh, this guy was unbelievable. <clears throat> he had an anointing that was like freaky. This guy was a freak. He had so many people healed, so many people delirious. He, uh, this guy went for years and years and years evangelizing. Super powered man of God. Super powered. Guess what happened? No, John, I got a movie now. I hear it all the time. Brother Mike, pray for me. I lost my job. I said, I will pray for you. But not the way you think. <laughs> I know I've seen it too many times I've seen it too many times they're not getting fired that's a promotion yes, sir. I've seen it too many times I gotta watch myself or I'll get in trouble if they call me up and say I lost a job I can't act too happy <laughs> Seriously, because they'll they'll feel I'm disrespecting them. So when they call me up and say, hey, I lost my job. Oh, 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 I become a couch potato. Boop. I sit on my chair and I, oh, but then I go, let me share something with you. The last person that happened to, they went from here to here. What had happened there? You'd been on that job, things were going well, you're paying the bills here and there. Uh, you kind of settled in. No, no. God wanted you here, not here. But because you were in your comfort zone, you can't see God's will for your life anymore. You're too comfortable. Disasters. Are to be embraced Amen. Amen. as victories. John goes from being the most powerful faith healer on the planet to what? Click the revelator. The emperor banishes him to Alcatraz. And it looks like the devil has stopped the most powerful man of God on the planet. Did he? No. Ah, oh, far from it, friend. He writes the book of Revelation, which was a greater work than anything he'd ever done in his 80 or 90 years of his life. Supposedly, he was the oldest apostle. I don't know. I wasn't there, but Assuming that theory is true He had to have had a spectacular ministry like no other like nobody else
the emperor arrests him. And they ship him off to a deserted island. That'll get rid of that man of God. <laughs> Friend, no matter what the devil does to you, if you're in God's will, you win no matter what. No matter what. I am your brother in what? Here it says tribulation. Yeah, tribulation. Now he's stuck on where? Patmos. What a drag that is. There's the, there's the uh, island right there. See that? You can see it's right there. The emperor Dominion threw him there, 95 AD supposedly. That's what it's called now, Patimo. It's, it's habited now. There, that's the island. It's in the Mediterranean. Back then it was, you know, a rattle. They discarded prisoners there, convicts. It was like Alcatraz in a way, only not as nice. And guess what? <clears throat> John isn't anywhere near home anymore. Here's the Holy Land. He's clear out there. What does that look like? Total defeat. Uh, no, no, no. When God encourages you to get off that couch, it may look bad for a while, but victory's right around the corner. Amen. Yes, sir. Yeah, yes, sir. yeah. I can't believe the greatest man of God on the planet Earth just got thrown on an island to rot to death and die. That looks bad. That's true. Getting out of your comfort zone does look bad. It will look bad. Not for long. Not for long. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and guess what I heard a great voice Jesus was talking to him on the island of Patmos oh you don't understand see if you're in God's will and you end up in a rat hole your friends will leave you your family will dump you and the church will bag you but Jesus will come talk to you <laughs> he likes to come to the rat hole you slid into Amen. yeah, Amen. yeah. Uh huh. He, he not over at Kenneth Copeland's bowling in his wife's bedroom. Here, the bowling. No, he's over a rat hole looking to perform some miracles, not get a strike. Hello? Oh, boy. What you see, write it in a book. Well, I have that book. I've read that book several times. It's the book of. <laughs> wow. What a book. Peter and the Messianic Jews had to be moved out of their comfort zone. They were doing a spectacular job, weren't they? They were winning Jews to Christ left and right in Jerusalem after the Holy Ghost fell, weren't they? Thousands of them being saved. But God had to pull Peter off the couch. Again. Some people get in multiple comfort zones in life and have to be pulled out numerous times. Peter was one of them. Here it is, Acts chapter 10. He goes up, journeys to a new town. He goes up on the housetop to pray around the sixth hour, which would be noon. He became very hung hungry. He wanted to eat something. And suddenly, what? He fell into an ecstasy. What is that? You ever seen that look before? Anybody married seen it? <laughs> he fell into a trance and check it out. He gets a vision from God. It's unbelievable. Heaven opened. A vessel came down right out of heaven. He had an open vision. It's like a movie that plays in front of you. Click. And he sees it. And he looks down at it. And he goes... Oh man, there's a bunch of uh, food to eat in there. Meat. It says all manner of four-footed bees. Okay, that's not bad. Some, some uh, animals you could eat, some you couldn't, correct? And then uh, there were some mentioned here he's not supposed to eat. Uh, fowls and creeping things. Too creepy to eat. That was not in the law of Moses. You couldn't eat that stuff. 
So uh, the voice says to him, Peter, go eat that. Rise, get up, go eat. And he says, Lord. He knows he's talking to Jesus. He calls him Lord. I've never eaten anything that is koinato or unclean. And the voice said to him the second time, what God has cleansed, do not call koinato. And koinato is something normal, something just used here and there, something that's, I don't know, kind of like uh, uh, M&M's. Yeah, yeah. Somebody says, you want an M&M? You don't go, oh, whoa, hold on. <laughs> Let me, I only want the ones that are printed a certain way. Can it, no, you just grab an M&M. Yeah, I'll take one. And I'll pop it in there. And it's just like another thing. You know, it doesn't mean nothing. Does it? I mean, if you got peanut M&M's, well, that's different. You know, wow, those are anointed. But if you get the regular ones, you just... The pop them in there. Who gives a rat's fanny? What kind of an M and M you got in your mouth? Who cares? What's the difference? That's koinao. See, the things of the spirit are not common. They are divine. They are supernatural. And if God says, "I cleanse that person," don't you say they're just another M and M in the bag? No, no, no. That's a diamond, not an M and M in a bag. Is this helping? Yes. Don't call something koinao that I said has been cleansed. Right? Amen. Then they go to what? You know the rest of the story? Cornelius and his whole family. They are filled with the Holy Ghost. It was like Jerusalem. Amazing. The whole family got saved and filled with the Spirit. And uh, guess what happened? The Messianic Jews almost fainted why God had to take these Jews and move them out of their comfort zone the gospel originally was planned for the whole world not just Jews the nation of Israel is different from a Jew that's a nation yeah there's special things about the nation of Israel that are going to be fulfilled Jews are just like Gentiles. All must be saved. There's only one God and one mediator between God and men. Jesus Christ the Lord. Jews, Gentiles. You are all one in Christ. Not the nation of Israel. That's different. The Jews had to be hauled off the couch. Peter, once again, had to be moved out of his comfort zone. You see, Peter was back in it again. He was winning. Lots of Jews getting saved. Lots of Jews getting healed. Yahoo! Peter was getting ready to get a Kenneth Copeland manual and build a heliport on his roof and a freeway through his living room. Had it all worked out. Whoop! Time to move out of your comfort zone again, Peter. We got to get these Gentiles saved. Thank God for that, because I'm looking at a bunch of Gentiles right now. Hopefully they're not heathens. The Gent Jews were what? Astonished. Translation, they didn't know they were in the comfort zone. I know this is going to sound kind of nuts, but in this ministry, I run into a lot of people who are in a comfort zone of asking for help. What did you, what did you say, Brother Mike? The demons tell the person, listen, you've got to go find somebody anointed enough to get these spirits out of you. Why don't you start going around to all these different deliverance people and different churches and different ministries and then you can find somebody that just... and they get in a deliverance rut. 
I'd never even known that deliverance ruts existed until I saw them. And they're very comfortable with it. Can you pray for me? Can you pray for me? Can you pray for me? Will you pray for me? Will you pray for me? Can you pray for me? <laughs> they're very comfortable with it and other people are not in that comfort zone and you can't even hardly drag them out of a chair to ask for prayer. No, then they're paralyzed. You ever seen that? We see it around here all the time. These Jews were astonished. Oh my God! The Gentiles are flowing in tongues. There's a Gentile over there singing in tongues. That one's prophesying. What's going on here? What's going on here was it's Saturday afternoon at the synagogue in Mark chapter 1. It's time to move this synagogue out of its comfort zone into God's call on their life. The Gentiles were poured out the gifts of the Holy Ghost. We saw them speaking glossa. Megaluno means to what? Make something great. That's what happens in sports. Right? Michael Jordan. Kevin Durant. Trump. <laughs> Megaluno means glory to God. Lord, you are great. That's what that means. Spiritual. So they knew that the Gentiles were part of the kingdom of God. Why? They had to be moved out of their zone. They were in a zone and didn't know it. People get in comfort zones. They don't know they're there. You're right. You're right. Somebody comes along and tells them that it's a gift from God, and they take offense at it. It's true. <laughs> you know, you're in your comfort zone. You should be doing much more. What? They call the pastor. Somebody told me I'm in a comfort zone. I should be doing something else. Just ignore him and tithe. Click. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing ever gets done. <laughs> Nothing gets done. That's why God has to allow certain things to happen that can't be clicked on. And they're good for you. At that moment, it doesn't seem good, but in the long run, I'm talking the long run, I'm talking the eternity. Yes, man. It's good for you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's good to be moved out of your comfort zone. If he hadn't been moved out of his comfort zone that day, I wouldn't be sitting here looking at you. We would have never got saved. Hallelujah. Thank God. I would have never had a Tracy lead me to God. Had a, had Peter not moved off that roof. Right? Absolutely. Somebody had to be booted out of their comfort zone to see us saved. And somebody's got to get saved when you get booted out of your comfort zone. This is all true, folks. I'm not making this stuff up. Matthias. Who's that guy? Well, he's a guy that got moved out of his comfort zone, and he was a wonderful man of God. Matthias had been with Jesus practically from day one. He was at the level two discipleship group. That was the big group. You had the 12 nincompoops here, <laughs> then you had the big group down here. The 70 came out of that group, right? Jesus had numerous disciples. He had the 12 jackasses, and then he had numerous other disciples. The 12 were used as an illustration of what you and I are not supposed to be doing. That's why they were chosen. They were picked out by the Holy Ghost. The Bible says Jesus prayed all night. All night. Now whatever he was praying about, that was important. For Christ to pray all night. Huh? I mean that had to be something important. He picked those 12 idiots, all 12 of them, basic failures. 
Why? Because we needed them. Peter was a super goof. He wasn't a regular goof like the rest of them. He was a monster goof. He's my favorite. I can relate to that guy. <laughs> if God, think of it, get there. If God can save these 12 imbeciles, you are a piece of cake. Amen. Amen. That's why they were chosen, don't you see it? Judas. Oh, man, this guy. I don't know. I get a lot of criticism for Judas. I don't feel as bad about him because I think what happened was he just had all this terrible greed in his soul. And he loved money. And he was cheap. He was a chiseler. And, uh, you know, if there was a deal going on, he would take a bigger cut. He was that kind of person. And he was a self-absorbed self type person. And he had been following Jesus for three or four years. And he goes, my God, this, guy's, this guy can get out of any scrape known to man. He has escaped dangerous situations numerous times. Uh, he's been uh, drowned at sea two or three times and stopped a tsunami and stopped a hurricane. Uh, nothing, nothing gets him. He can't be taken down. So what's, what's the problem if I get a couple bucks out of this? So he goes to the Pharisees. He says, hey, listen, what are you paying me if I get you, turn this guy over to you? Thinking in his mind... Or he's going to get out again. He's going to escape. <clears throat> he had too much greed. He wasn't listening to the word. Amen. Greed causes you to follow money and not God's word. Right. He didn't understand that that was Jesus' time to save all of our souls. Right. He didn't get it. So he betrays him thinking, hey, I can pick up 30 pieces of silver, which was a literal fortune at that time. And he'll escape. They'll come to arrest him, and I don't know, he'll Casper ghost him. Poof, he's gone. I got the money, and Jesus shows up somewhere else, like he always does. Escapes out of the temple, escapes from the storm, escapes everywhere. He's always, he's always escaping. No problem. Now there was a problem. This time they took him. And he runs back to the Pharisees. And he tries to fix it. You can't fix stuff in the carnal world, friend. No. You gotta let God do it for you. Tracy and I just found that out. We were helpless as two month old babies. Helpless. He goes right to him. He says, Hey. Uh, here, take the money back. Let him go. He tries to reverse it. Because he knows he screwed up. Because he saw he was what? Catacrino means sentenced. Condemned and sentenced to death. It was too late. He didn't just disappear this time. They got him. They put him on a sham trial in the middle of the night. Judas saw the whole thing. He knew it was over. He blew it. So he tried to fix it. So he doesn't want to have any part of it. He gets, starts feeling guilty. He has regrets. He throws the money at him. Here, take the money. Will that do it? Take it. He didn't do it. They said, we don't care about your money. That's your business, you fool. Yeah, he brought him back. He brought the money back. He never did keep the money. Here's an actual picture of the bag and the money that I got off of Google. I don't know where they got it. The Greek word is argurion, which means silver. He had silver coins with the emperor's face on them. And he gave it back. He never kept the money. I have sinned. I betrayed innocent blood. He knew Jesus was, was innocent. So in my mind, you may have a different story, and yours might be right. I'm not saying this is what happened. I'm just, I'm just, saying, I'm just saying this is my view of it. Okay, could have been something different. This isn't the gospel. Don't send me an email. <laughs> Judas goes, oh my God, I blew it. He's not going to get out of this one. See? And he feels guilty and he's shameful and all this other horror comes over him. But there was a practical reason why he wanted Jesus loosed again, wasn't there? 
He was his meal ticket He had the bag the Bible says he was a thief He took money out of the bag that bag the leather bag what kept the donations for the poor remember that so Judas is thinking, oh my god my I got kids to feed I got a wife and kid and all I There goes my meal ticket What happened then well what the opposite of what should have happened <clears throat> He should have gone to the disciples and said this is what I did This is what I am Please forgive me I'm sorry, I betrayed you, I betrayed God, I did this, I did that. No, he wouldn't do it. So. Repenting to other people is good, but it's not good enough. Repenting to God is good, but it's not good enough. You ever heard of restitution? Have you ever heard of an apology? Oops, those are bad. People like to repent in their closet. Dear Lord, I'm so sorry I yelled at Susie and called her a biatch. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> I'm fine. Until I see Susie again. Okay, that's not God. You go to Susie and you apologize to her and the Lord. Is anybody getting this? Judas wouldn't go to them. He just wallowed in regret and shame and guilt that's what it says he regretted it and then he went out and did what yeah he died and went to hell <clears throat> poor guy Acts chapter 1 Judas's death moved Matthias out of his comfort zone. Come on. You lost the job. God's got that one for you. Yes. Judas hung himself. Uh -huh. Suddenly there's an opening. <laughs> Suicides create openings. <laughs> they threw the lots. They fell on. He had been with them from the beginning. He was a faithful man of God. He was a powerful follower of the Lord. But God had bigger plans for him. Sometimes in your life, bad things happen to other people to get you to move over there. Sometimes it's not you. Jesus did the same thing for you. He didn't commit suicide, but when he died, you were here so you could be there. Yes. Praise Jesus. Matthias had no idea at the Saturday prayer meeting that they were going to use him to fill that spot. When something bad happens, if you'll stay faithful, God will turn that thing around and lay it right in your lap. And you won't even see it coming. There was no memo sent around months before. In the event that Judas Iscariot murders himself, Matthias, you are going to replace. That never happened. No one knew anything about it. And you won't either. God doesn't explain everything to us because we walk by faith, not by sight. Matthias stayed faithful. Somebody else fell apart and God moved him in to replace him. It can happen. He was, a big, he was with them from the beginning of John the Baptist to that very day, to the ascension, it says. He'd been there the whole time. 
he was ordained to be a witness by God so they picked one of the two Matthias means what gift of God yeah that's what he was what a neat guy supposedly he was martyred in Ethiopia whether that's true or not I don't know Acts chapter 1 they gave forth their lots and it fell upon Matthias he became one of the 12 apostles Let's close with this illustration. Moses. Number two in Egypt. This guy had it all. Everything. He could add anything he wanted. Rock bands. <laughs> music videos. Racks of chicks. Parades Moses had everything But he knew he was supposed to deliver Israel from Egypt And so some uh, Egyptian soldier is abusing an Israelite Moses drops in I don't know if he accidentally killed the guy or not Something bad happened anyway the soldier dies Moses forsakes everything Had no Faith at all, God would protect him. None at all. Ran. Ran like a rabbit. Scared rabbit. Ran. Second guy in Egypt. Number two guy. Running like a rabbit. Scared to death. Next time you're scared, you're not going to be so hard on yourself. You're not even the second in your own house. <laughs> Pharaoh Moses ran like a scaredy cat. Where does he run to? Well, where everybody wants to run to, out in the desert. I can't wait to get there. What's he do next? Gets a high-powered job shuffling sheep around. Oh, that's a great job, shuffling sheep around. They smell dandy. <laughs> He does it for 40 years, but guess what? God, even after 40 years, did not call your future from you, even though you ran off and forsook it. The call is still on you. You think it's gone. You thought it was over. It's still there. He sees a bush burning. He goes, that's unusual. I'm... Even the sheep were looking at it. <laughs> then the bush starts talking to him. Well, that, that did it. The sheep ran back to Egypt. The bush wasn't burning up. Then the voice starts talking to him. He says, hey, you're going back to Egypt. I'm going to use you to bring two million Jews out into the wilderness where they can worship me. Mm -hmm. Kind of reaction would you have to that? <laughs> yeah, well, if you were somebody who drank much, uh, you'd be pounding quickly. If you used drugs, it was a full two and three vials. I'm not going back to Egypt. Okay, there's a warrant out for my arrest for murder. No faith at all. No faith in God at all. He then goes through five. Five excuses. Have you failed before? You're fine. Moses, the greatest Jew in history. Moses, the great one. Five times tried to get out. Of his call from God. I can't believe that story. Is that real? Yeah, it doesn't sound real. I mean, if you ran out of Mo Egypt, a total failure, you'd probably be thinking, man, I wish I had a second chance to get back there and make that thing. I like to, you know, it's like baseball. You know, you strike out and you're, you're sitting in the dugout and I, 
You can't wait to get back up there to get a hit. No, not Moses. No, he's a gutless loser. He's got a yellow streak up his back, clear down to the couch potato area, all the way up to his neck. He says, well, who am I to go? I'm a, I'm, all I do is sniff sheep all day. There it is, verse 11. Verse 13, well, they, they'll want to know what your name is. Why do you say that? Well, because in his mind, uh, Jews never mentioned his name. It was too sacred to even say it. So he's hoping that he can get Yahweh to back off because they're going to want to know your name. See, and he's thinking, I'm sure he won't let me do that because you don't want anybody to know your name, right? <laughs> Wrong, sucker. <laughs> well, they won't believe me. Well, here, just do all these miracles. And they'll, oh, you know, I can't even speak well. In fact, he wasn't speaking well at that moment. Everything was a stutter. <laughs> He's scared and people who stutter stutter more when they're scared They don't stutter at all while they're sleeping unless they're sleepwalking If they're scared they start stuttering like crazy and can hardly get a word out Moses Jehovah had Michael the archangel there as an interpreter Trying to figure out what Moses was saying <laughs> What he say he said he can't go he's scared <laughs> Then finally, after all the objections are overcome by Jehovah, the eternal God, he says, well, send somebody else. <laughs> Moses didn't have a comfort zone, friend. He had dug in like an Alabama tick into his comfort zone. He was not moving. Okay, he had 400 sheep butts. That he'd been looking at for years and he was comfortable with them See you get in your comfort zone even a sheep's butt looks good That's how low you sink That's how dangerous it is to be in a comfort zone Even the stupid looks intelligent Have you ever seen a sheep? They're idiots <laughs> He wanted the sheep over God. All right. And when you're in your comfort zone too long, right. that's how you end up. Have you failed? Have you made excuses before? Yeah. God's not mad at you. How could he be? How could he be with this guy? He was making up stuff to get out of it. Well, I can't speak well enough. And the Bible says Jehovah got frustrated with him. And he looks up and he does something he doesn't want to do. Aaron was never supposed to be a part of it. Moses's cowardice and his rebellion and his disobedience sucked Aaron into it that cost the lives of thousands of Hebrews. Aaron was a farce. As soon as they took that holy robe off of Aaron, he dropped dead on the spot. Why? You know why. Aaron wasn't even supposed to be there to make a golden calf. But Aaron was the Old Testament Peter. Aaron, back in more than a Nigerian telemarketer. <laughs> and Jehovah said, Well, I know your brother. There's your brother coming up the hill, wanting to know where you are. Because normally they have the sheep butts back in the pen by now. This is taking some time up there with the burning bush, and Aaron comes looking for him. Where's the butts and the sheep? Where's he at? 
And that's how Aaron got into it. He should have never been there. There should have never been a golden calf. Listen, friend, if you don't get out of your comfort zone tonight, the devil's going to leave your golden calf in your life. Your sickness, your demons, your poverty, your terrible friends, your rotten family members. You've got golden calves in your life that should have never been there because you wouldn't move out of that comfort zone. And you're going to get rid of them. Why is that? Because 2020 is just around the corner. Amen. It's coming up so fast, it's hard to believe. And you are not going to go into 2020 like you went into 2019. That's not going to happen. No. And you know what you're going to do? You're going to get out of your comfort zone. You're going to see it and recognize it. And you're going to do it. And pray through on your own so that God doesn't have to force you to do it. Amen. If he has to force you, as you've seen, it's a tough, as you've seen with me, it's a tough, tough period. And you can avoid it Amen. by repenting. You in a comfort zone? Have you fallen into a rut? Is it a rut? A church rut? A Bible reading rut? What? What is it? What is it? Christian get in ruts. Well, things have been going pretty good now, Brother Mike. That's temporary. You're here, and you're supposed to be here spiritually. Amen. You're supposed to be here. God sees your big picture. You're here. You don't belong here anymore. YouTubers, you don't belong here anymore. You're here. This is where you're called to be. Let's pray then. Let's pray. Father God, I look through your word, Lord, with my friends here tonight. My girl Tracy, I'm watching. I thank you from the bottom of my heart. She's watching and still with me. But I thank you for all the trials we went through because I got to move out of my comfort zone. I thank you for all the tears, all the pain, all the hurt. I rejoice in it now. I thank you for it. I appreciate it. Thank you for everything that went bad, everything that looked hopeless. I'm rejoicing now. I thank you for it. And I got some friends here tonight, Lord, that are in ruts. They're Christian ruts. They're in a church rut. They're in a prayer rut. They're in a devotional time rut. They're in a family rut. They're in a godless marriage rut. And the Holy Spirit's ready to move them out of it. Thank you, Jesus. I'm praying for my friends here tonight. Lord, I'm praying for my YouTube friends. We're going to repent of it tonight, Lord. Father God, I've slipped into a rut. I've slipped into a, a comfort zone. I feel comfortable. I, I go to work and I put in eight hours there and then I drive home. That's, that's another half an hour, an hour. And then I get home. Then I do this and that, and then I just collapse. And I tell myself I'm going to pray more and I'm going to read my Bible more, I'm going to, but I don't end up doing it. And the devil's got me in the comfort zone. He's got me in a rut, and I'm wasting my life. And I know I've been called. I've been like Moses. I made excuses. And I got used to another life. But I want to be like Moses tonight. I want to repent and become God's greatest man of faith and power. I want to change tonight. I do. I want to change tonight. I got in a rut of taking offenses. 
I get in a rut of hating my parents or my spouse or my ex or who it is. I'm in a rut, Lord. And I have to repent of it tonight. I have to. I'm in a healing rut. I'm learning to adjust the sicknesses. God have mercy on me. Help me, Lord. I don't want to waste another year. I can't do it. I don't want to waste another month. I don't want to come see Brother Mike three years from now saying, hey, I got the same problem I had three years ago. Father, no. Father, no. I know mercy covers this. I know grace covers it. Sweet Jesus, no. The devil is going to take his filthy hands off me. He's going to let me go. I am not going to sit there in his comfort zone anymore. I'm going to embrace my challenges and my trials. I'm going to fight back and learn spiritual warfare. And I'm going to fulfill my destiny. I'm going to fulfill my destiny. My life is more than working and eating. I've had enough. I've had enough in Jesus' mighty name. I've had enough. I want you to come forward if you prayed that prayer with me. I want to pray with you down here tonight. Something's blocking you from getting out of your comfort zone and you want to get out of this thing in the worst way. I want you to come down the front here. We're going to pray for you. You know you're in a rut. You know what the devil did. He backed off of you and you got comfortable. He backed off of you. You got comfortable. You got to repent of it tonight. You have to. You have to repent of it tonight. Moses made five excuses. He made five excuses, but then he repented. He repented. We've made five excuses before. I've done it. You've done it. But mercy covered it. Mercy covers this. Grace covers this. Grace covered Moses. He said to God, just send somebody else. Translation, I quit. You might have quit on God, but he has not quit on you. He kept after Moses. And Moses' his entire life turned around because he repented. He repented. Come on, do that now. Tell him you're sorry. Father God, I'm so sorry for this rut. Please forgive me, Lord. That's right. Please forgive me, Lord. So sorry, Lord. Have mercy. I don't want to live for myself anymore. Hear this gal praying? Hear that prayer? Pray louder, honey. I don't want to be selfish anymore, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for forgiving me, Father. Plead the blood of Jesus. Plead the blood of Jesus, the precious blood. Keep going, honey. Mind is renewed in your word in the name of Jesus. Amen. Keep going, sweetheart. Please forgive me. Thank you, Father, Jesus. I come to you as I am. I come to you as I am. Good. Knowing that you can heal me. Know that you come can on heal now. me. Pray like that. You are faithful. Good. Knowing Good. That you can move Good. Hallelujah, Jesus. I repent of this insanity. I want it out now. Out. Come out of me right now. Come out of there, you blocking spirit. You blocking spirit. Come out of that body right now. Anger, rage and anger. I bind your power right now. Come on out. Come on out of there. Come on out. Low self-esteem. Come on out of there. Low self-esteem. Come out of that body right now. Come out of her stomach. All the porn. Come on out. Sexual sin, I bind your power. Come out of that body. Come on out of there. I repent right now. Right now. 
Rejection. Come on out of there. Just pray harder. Come on. Let it go. Wasted years. Come out of that. Wasted years. Frustration and anger. Come on out. Frustration and anger. Come out of there. Right now. Spirit, come on out right now. Quickly. Come out of there. Come out. Come out. Come out. You kundalini demons. We bind your power tonight. Come on out right now. Go. Years of rebellion and disobedience. Go. Come on out. Right now. Get on that body right now. Come on out. Quickly. Come out of there. Come on out of there. Go. Get out of that body right now. All these wasted years. Come out right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Give me the anointing, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I love you. Say that. I love you. You get out of that body right now. Here it comes. Here it comes. Here it comes. Satan, lose your hold. Satan, lose your hold. Hold that. Come on, buddy. Come on out. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I love you, dear Lord. I love you, dear Lord. Have mercy on me. Tonight, every ugly man that ever touched your body will come out of there. All of them. There he comes. Here he comes. Here he comes. Here he comes. Here he comes. Hold that. Come on right now. Go. Come on now. Go. Go now. Come on, everybody, right now. There he comes. There he is. <coughs> Lust. Come on, everybody. Lust. Go. Come out right now. Go. Come out. Go. Every ugly man that ever touched your body comes out to me. Come on. All of them. All the transfer spirits. Come on out. All of them. Every one of them. Come on, sweetheart. Go. Oh, come on. All of them. All of them. Come on. Come on right now. There, there it comes. There he comes. Oh, there, keep coughing. Come on out. Come on out. Hold that. Come on right now. Come on out. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Every transfer spirit from the youth. Teenager. Lost. Bad men. Come on out. Come out of the fight. Come out of the room right now. Come on. Come on. Let's go. Let's go now. Let's go now. Come on out now. Come on out now. 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 Come on, come on, right now. Get out of that body right now. Come out. Come out, you devil. Come out of that body. Get out of that body right now. Come out right now. Come out of there right now. Unclean spirit of food, I command you in Jesus' name. Get out of that body right now. Come out. Come on out. Come out there. Right now. Get out of there. Lost. Come out. Women, come out. Loneliness, come out. Right now. Go. Out. Out to go. Get out of that body right now. Come out quicker. Satan on your hold. Satan. Go now. Come out of that body right now. Quickly. Quickly come out. All of it. You're thinking, lost demon, I curse you. Come out right now. There he comes. There he is. Come on out. You got lost demon. Go. Come out. Come on out. Take a big breath. Big breath. Big breath. Come out of her lungs. Come out of there. Come out. Charismatic demons. Come out of that body. Church demons. Church demons. Come on out. Come out of them lungs. Go. Let's go. Church demons. Prophetic spirits. Kundalini spirits. Go, Satan. Go, Satan. Go, Satan. Get out of there. Come on out. Come on out. Come out. Come out. 
Go! Get out of there, body, right now. Come out of your body, right now. Come on, son. Come out of the room. Let's go. Let's go. Come on out. Come out of there. Is that your husband? Who's that guy? Okay. No. No. Okay. No. 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 Okay. No. No. Okay. No. No. Okay. No. He's uh, about to get divorced. He was uh, he's getting a bunch of divorce, and his ex sold um, sold to the devil. No, sold him to the devil. Sold his her sold to the devil. Oh, okay. Now what's in here? Uh, uh, blocking spirits. Yeah. Blocking. Now, when's the last time you had a hard cry? Yeah, dear Jesus. Now you got no business marrying some guy that's chuck full of demons. I so you get healed first. You gotta get healed first. Okay. Now let's try it. Ready? Lord Jesus, I let, I've lost my anointing. I've lost my Holy Ghost tears. I'm asking you, give me back my tears tonight. Give me back my tears, dear Lord, sweet Lord. Help me now, Lord. Give me back my tears. Give me back my tears. My Holy Ghost tears. God help me. There you go. I release my tears. I release my tears. All these family curses. All these ugly relatives. All these exes. Come on out. Get out of there, buddy. Get out of right now. Get out of there. Demon of fear. Come out. Fear to fear. Come out of there, buddy. There he is. Demon of fear. Come out. Demon of fear. Go. Go. There he is. Come on out. You rotten spirit of fear. Come out of there. Come out. Right now. Come out, you rotten spirit. Get out of the body right now. Demon of fear. Go. 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 Come out of his throat. Come out now. Get out of the body right now. In Jesus' money name. Come out in Jesus' money name. Go. Get out of the body right now. Come out of the spine. Come out of the spine. Come out of the head right now. You get out of his brain. Stop messing with his mind. Come out of the head. Seduce his fear. Come out. Get out. Demon of fear. Go. Demon of fear. Go. All of them. Come out. Come on out. Quickly. Quickly come out. Quickly. Quickly, I said. There they come. Come out in Jesus' holy name. Come out in Jesus' money name. Come out, thus saith the Lord. Come out, Satan. Get out of that body. Get out of that body right now. Get out of that body. Come out of our hips right this second. Come out of the spine. Get out of that body right now. Go. Quicker. Fear. Anxiety. Loneliness. Lonely. Lonely. Come out. Hurry up. Go. Come on out. Let's go. Let's go. Get out of that body right now. Come out of our room right this second. Come out right now. Go in Jesus' holy name. Thus saith the Lord. Come on, stomach. There he is. There he is right there. That's him. You filthy spider spirit. Take your claws out. Spider, come on. Spider, come on. Go. 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 Every tentacle. Every tentacle. Go. Go in Jesus' mighty name. There they go. You come out of her legs right now. Come on, legs. Go. Come out of them shoulders right now. Right now, quickly. Come out of her spine. Spine, come out. Get out of there. Go now. Go now, I said. Satan, we command you to go. Satan, we command you to go. Body right now, you get out of there. Satan, loose your hold. 
Let his mind go. Let his mind go. Go. Come out. Hurry up. Get out of there. Come on, buddy, right now. Go now. Go now. Go right now. Get out of there. Thank you, Jesus. Are you speaking to him? Go ahead. You used to. Go now. Okay, stop. Now listen, your tongues are blocked, so let's fix it right now, okay? Just pray after me. Kola Basha. Kola Sate. Kola Basha. Kola Male. Kola Basha. Boya Ba. Kola Ba. Now, did you notice I was speaking in short syllables? Yes. Did you notice that? Yes. And you were running them together? You notice that? Yes. Okay. Now let's try it again. Ready? Yes. Only this time you follow me and then you add syllables from your language. Good. Keep going. Good. 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 Go, go, go. It came out. Go. I vomited it out. It came out? It vomited it out. You speak in tongues? I do. Oh, okay. Close your eyes. Okay. Go ahead. Speak, speak it out. In tongues? Yeah. You speak in tongues? I do, but I have to, I have to quiet for a moment. Oh, you do? No, okay. Be quiet, then go. No, no, speak in so short syllables. Yeah, there you go. Good. Good. Keep going. Keep going. Good girl. Louder. Go. Every generational spirit, every monster from your family tree, out. You are cursed. Every demon from your homeland, come out of there. Come out. Come out of there. Come out of there. Come out of there. Come out of there. Come out of Come Come on, pray harder. Pray harder. Uh, we hope you speak your tongues, short syllables. How'd that go? How'd that go? Thank you, Jesus. You speak your tongues? Yes, I do. Go ahead. Get a girl, louder. Go. Good. Louder. Speak it up. Come on now. Add a girl. Speak it out. Louder. There you go. There you go. Add a girl. Good girl. Louder. Excellent. Louder. Louder. Get out of the right now. Come out of there right now. Come out. Come out of me. Shake loose. Shake loose. Shake loose. Shake loose. Satan, loose your hold. Satan, loose your hold. Go. Go! Go now! Go! You rotten devil! 
to lose your hope. Go! There you go, good, louder. Under the motion, the Borea. Under the motion, the Borea. Come on. Come on. Under the motion, the Borea. 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 Come on. Come on. Come on. You get that thing out of there right now. Get him out of there right now. Right now. Oh, he you. Oh, in Jesus' name. Go, there oh, go. Go. Come on, buddy. Come on, them joints. Come on, sweetheart. Get him out of there. Get him out of there now. Now. Now go. Good, 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 good. Go, 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 go. The Holy Ghost is moving. Anything can happen. When he's around. Anything can happen when he's around. Go for it. The Holy Ghost is moving. Go for it. Anything can happen with him around. Anything can happen. All the demons come out. All the sicknesses come out. It's a Holy Ghost on a rampage. Anything can happen. Streamers, YouTubers, put your hand on your stomach, your chest. Put your hand and command the devil to come out. Command him to come out. Command the devil to come out. Come on. Come on, sweetheart. Let's go. You got some monster in there. That thing has to come out. You're in trouble, hon. There's something in there bad. Really bad. Now, what have you been doing? Um, I had a relapse after. You had a what? I had a, one relapse. Oh, what kind but, of drugs is uh, it? But I came, I came back. What kind of drugs is it? The relapse that I had was like two weeks ago on heroin. Oh, heroin. Okay. And then, yeah, but but. Before I, that, what were you doing? I have smoked weed and heroin. That's all I just said that. Oh, but not. You got a boyfriend? Right. Did you have a boyfriend? Do I have a boyfriend? Did you have a boyfriend back no, then? I, I was, Earlier. I was, I, I was the one that you did deliverance on the, um, that was with like the warlock for like three years. With what? Three years? With the warlock for three years. Yeah. yeah. What's his name? Igor. What? Igor. Igor. Igor and Donald. They, they, that's, they, 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 right. they keep trying to, they rape me during my sleep and try to get me to relapse, but I have been fighting them and doing really good. Oh, okay, that's good. Now close yeah. your eyes. Close your eyes. Take a big breath. Igor. Donald. Donald, you come out of that body right now. Come out of there. Donald, come on out. Donald, come out. You stinking spirit, I command you in the name of Jesus. Come out of my body right now. Get out of there. Come on out. Get out of my body right now. Come up. Come out of my body. Donald, you come out of me right now. Get out of me right breath. now. Blow. Take a big breath and blow. Come out, Donald. Donald, come on out. Get out of my body, Donald. Right now. Come out right now. Go. Go. How are you doing? Thank you. This is my husband. What's wrong with him? Depression and anxiety. He's been to about five psychiatrists and they have him all drugged up. Yeah, that's not what's wrong with him. Now, who hurt him when he was young? Excuse me? Who hurt him when he was young? He says no one, but he doesn't speak. He keeps everything inside. Everything's been perfect, he always says. Everything's been what? He always says everything's perfect. He had a perfect childhood. He never says negative. Never. What's his name? Eddie. Eddie. Eddie, I want you to listen to me for a second. Yes. Hey, listen, there's nothing wrong with you. You have fear demons. They're right here in this area, right here. It came out? Oh, do you speak in tongues? 
You speak in tongues? Stand up. You speak in tongues? No. You don't? Okay. And just pray after me, okay? Bro Bashata. Kunda Basi. Belo Basika. Gondama. Karabasha. Now you notice how easily you were saying it? Okay, now this time, just follow me and then add a few syllables on your own. Okay? Kotama Shaba. Bandarama Shite. Lendo Bashanda. Ola Kata. Bandarama Shaba. Keep going. Bandarama. Yeah, good, good. There you go. Bandarama Shandara Varia. Keep going. Come on, Eddie. Speak it out. There you go. Good. Keep going. Hey, he's speaking, he's speaking in tongues. Now speak in tongues along with your wife. Okay? Go. Start, Start speaking in tongues. Go. You do. Speak it out. Good. There you go. Keep going. Eddie, there's nothing wrong with you. You're not sick. It's fear demons. It's all a hoax. Speak it out. Yesterday he got prayed for him and they told him to throw his medication away. He got so fearful this morning he went to see a psychiatrist for more. And I told him, You're not being obedient unto God, Eddie. You need to do what they tell you to do. And he was afraid. He just said he's so scared. No, it's not it's not him, it's demons. He has fear demons. Come on, speak it out. Go Rama Shandaravashi Dereva. Speak it out. Help him. Come on, Eddie. Speak out. Speak it out now. Speak it out now. Speak it out now. Streamers. The uh, Spirit of the Lord showed up tonight. Anything can happen when he's... Thank you, brother. Love you. Love you too, brother. Anything can happen when he's around. Anything. Love you. How's your daughter? She's doing great. She's out. got discharged today. Thanks for your prayers. Thank you. Now listen, the streamers, go to the website, hardcorechristianity.com. Go to the website and hit the teaching button at the top. It's in the top on the right. And go down and read these articles. How Satan controls the mind and Satan's counterattack. You will get hit within 48 hours of this service. You have to be ready for it. Okay? 48 hours. Okay? Thursday night is our healing room. The anointing is so thick in the building Thursday nights, you can cut it with a knife. You must be here for the healing rooms. 7 p.m. If you know a Christian who's mentally ill, they must be here Thursday nights at 7 o'clock for our mental illness healing class. Okay? Friday night is our teaching service. That would be me, that would be Peter, that would be Rick. Somebody will be here for the teaching service and to pray for you to be healed and delivered. See you next time.